Today we take a look at the Neptune 4 Pro from Elegoo. As an improvement to its previous version, the Neptune 4 Pro has a new cooling system on the X-axis and Clipper as its firmware for high print speeds of 250mm per second. For comparison, the standard speed of the Neptune 3 Pro was between 40 and 60mm per second. It also has metal wheels and metal guide rails instead of the usual plastic wheels on the X and Y axis. This should ensure that the movements of these axes are smooth and wear-free even at printing speeds of up to 500 mm per second. Clipper as firmware offers many advantages. However, one of the most important for the Neptune 4 Pro is the so-called input shaping. This compensates the vibrations of the printhead and adjusts the printhead accelerations so that print quality does not suffer at high print speeds. This brilliant feature means that no ringing or ghosting occurs even at high print speeds. To ensure that the hot end can handle these speeds, Clipper offers the pressure advance feature as well. As a result, printing errors such as stringing or blobs and clogging in the hot end occur much less frequently. However, there are also a few mechanical requirements that support the high print speeds and even make them possible in the first place. One of these features is the new fan system. Due to the high speeds, the hot filament is extruded very fast, so that it is not dragged along by the fast print head and the next layer does not have to be printed on a layer that is still hot and soft, a powerful system of fans was mounted on the X-axis. The entire power of the four integrated fans is directed to the previous printed layer. As a result, the extruded filament cools much faster than it would just due to the room temperature and the fans inside the print head. The fan system can be activated and deactivated separately via a switch and via the menu. Normally, all three axes of an FDM 3D printer are equipped with aluminium profiles in which plastic wheels run in a V-profile. To further improve performance at high printing speeds, Elegoo has replaced the X and Y axis wheels with metal wheels and matching metal rails. The print volume of the Neptune 4 Pro is slightly smaller than the Neptune 3 Pro. With this print volume, however, you can still print most projects in one piece. Only larger objects, such as in cosplay, would have to be split up and printed one after the other. However, if you want to use your 3D printer to print larger objects in one piece or many small objects at once, you can wait for the Plus or Max version of the Neptune 4 series, which are sure to come. The print bed is made of a flexible spring steel and is supported on a magnetic print plate. This allows you to flex it after printing and release your objects from it very easily. The Neptune 4 Pro gives you the option to heat only the center of the print bed to save energy. The leveling of the Neptune 4 Pro is divided into a manual rough leveling and a fine automatic leveling. There are four screws under the print bed that allow you to adjust the tilt of the print bed. With automatic print bed leveling, the print head automatically moves to several points on the print bed where the sensor in the print head measures the distance to the print bed at each point. The data obtained from the automatic print bed leveling is used to dynamically compensate the tilt during printing. Nothing has changed with the touchscreen and the menu compared to the previous version. It is attached to the 3D printer with a magnet and can be operated like a smartphone thanks to the long cable. You can now also operate and monitor the Neptune 4 Pro using a browser interface. Unfortunately, a Wi-Fi connection is still not possible, although it would be so much more practical. The Z-axis of the Neptune 4 Pro has two stepper motors and synchronization via a belt system at the upper end of the Z-axis. This ensures that the X-axis is always moved evenly and does not lag behind on one side. Especially due to the higher weight of the X-axis with the new fan system, this makes a lot of sense. At the top of the frame of the Neptune 4 Pro is an LED bar that covers the entire build volume. So even in a dark room you can quickly see if your print is going as planned or not. However, I think the small LED installed right next to the nozzle is much better. It lights up the area under the print head, which was otherwise hidden in a dark shadow. You can turn both LEDs on and off separately in the menu and this is also possible during printing. To test the print quality, I printed a few objects with a lot of details. You can find the links to them in the video description. I printed this articulated Optimus Primal in two different qualities, once with a layer height of 0.2mm and once with 0.12mm. I printed both at a speed of 250mm per second. In both cases, the result turned out perfect and no printing errors occurred. And that without much calibration effort. Actually, I would have expected at least some stringing, but apparently these are the advantages of the pressure advance feature of Clipper. Next, I wanted to test an object with a lot of supports. This Mew skull was perfect for that. 
I choose a lay height of 0.16 mm and a line width of 0.4 mm with an infill of 15%. The print took only 10 and a half hours, even though more than 200 grams of filament was used and the printed geometry is very complex. The final test was to print a relatively large bust with the highest possible print quality. I chose a very detailed Deadpool bust for this. With a layer height of 0.12 mm, a line width of 0.3 mm and only 5% infill, the print came out at 11.5 hours and needed 160 grams of filament. The bust turned out absolutely perfect. From not too far away you would think that it was printed with a resin 3D printer and not with an FDM 3D printer. The fact that this print quality is possible with such high print speed is the most amazing thing. I therefore think that the combination of clipper and the hardware upgrades it requires will be the way forward for FDM 3D printers. Even though this all sounds great, there is still room for improvement of course. One of the drawbacks of the Neptune 4 Pro is that the layer cooling on the x-axis is very loud. Noise levels above 60 dB and peaks of up to 70 dB can easily be produced when it is set to 100%. Without the layer cooling however, it is just as quiet as its predecessor and comes down to values of only about 35 decibels, which is equivalent to quiet whispering or rustling leaves. The disadvantage of the new metal rails is that they have to be greased regularly. Otherwise the metal rails will be slowly but surely destroyed by friction which can lead to various printing errors. There are mainly two upgrades of the Pro version compared to the normal Neptune 4. The print bed of the Neptune 4 has no heating zones, which makes the operation easier but offers no additional energy saving potential. The second major difference is that the X and Y axes run over the normal POM wheels in V profiles. If you mainly stick to 250mm per second, this is not a disadvantage as the Neptune 4 delivers the same print quality with it. I haven't tested it yet, but I can imagine that at a print speed of 500mm per second with special filament like the Hyper PLA from Creality, you will get a better long term performance. Despite this, the normal Neptune 4 will be absolutely perfect for most users. Links to both printers and the reviews on my website you can find in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'm out.